Hey everyone, welcome to our real interview experience series. As you know, we share our subscribers interview experience here. So one of our subscribers, Manish Kumar Gupta recently cracked Java developer interview at Paytm. So in this video, I'm going to share everything about the technical questions, what he shared with me. And guys, if you have attended any interview recently, then fill the form below in the description. We will reach out to you. You can choose to share your name or share your experience anonymously. We are also giving gift cards to the participants. Don't miss out and also don't forget to subscribe to catch more videos like this one. So now let's get started. So basically he applied through LinkedIn for a role open for three to six years of experience and he's having total three plus years of experience. There were total three rounds. The first round was online coding test. The second round was technical interview and the third round was HR. I'm going to discuss technical round here. So first interviewer asked about method overloading and method overriding in Java. So method overloading means using the same method name with the different parameters in the same class. Methods overriding means redefining a parent class method in a child class with the same name and parameters then he asked about auto wired and what are its alternatives so auto wired injects dependencies automatically in spring it helps connects components without manual setup alternatives include using inject annotation uh, resource annotation or constructor setter base injection manually then interviewer asked how inheritance work in try catch block so we can catch a parent exception class to handle all its child exceptions for example catching exception will handle io exceptions null pointer exception and other subclasses of exception then he asked about throwable in java so throwable is the parent class of all the errors and exceptions in java it represents problems a program might face like coding mistakes or system issue and can be caught using try catch blocks then interviewer asked the static keyword so the static keyword defines class level members it means the variables or methods belong to the class not instances you can access static members without creating an object like class name dot method or class name dot variable then he asked about the final keyword so the final keyword is used to make variables unchangeable methods non overridable and classes non inheritable once the final variable is assigned it cannot change a final method cannot be overridden and a final class cannot be extended okay before moving ahead guys i would like to share one important thing with you actually we had launched complete interview preparation material structured step by step by myself expert and mnc's interviewers and the best part is that now no one need to go anywhere else to prepare interviews there is a 99 percent chance that interviewers will ask questions from this material so basically it contain a lot of material categorized by experience levels means each experience level has different material with all possible interview question and answer for java spring framework maven git spring boot uh, spring security spring data jpa kafka microservices java coding questions stream api coding questions and many more i have provided the link to get this in the below description if someone need this material plus two real client enterprise projects for reference with video recorded sessions plus one-on-one -on -one lifetime doubt sessions and reference to the mnc's then they should check the interview preparation kit i will provide the link for this as well in the description below so now moving to our interview experience then they ask about a singleton class so a singleton class allows only one object to be created during the program's lifetime it is used when exactly one instance is needed like for logging database connections or configuration settings okay guys then interviewer asks how do you create a singleton class in java so this is important question so to create a singleton first make the constructor private define a private static instance of the class and provide a public setting methods to return that instance this ensures only one object is created and reused then interviewer asks about marker interface and what is functional interface so a marker interface has no methods it's just marks a class a functional interface has only one abstract method and in use in lambda expressions like runnable or comparator then he asks if we have a method in both the super class and subclass what happens if we later change the methods return type so if the return type is changed to a compatible subtype it works but if it's unrelated or incompatible it causes a compile time error because it breaks method overriding rules then they ask about pass by value versus pass by reference so java uses pass by value when passing primitives uh, the value is copied for object the reference is copied so changes affect the original object but not the reference itself okay 
then they ask about a static block so a static block is used to initialize static variables it runs once when the class is loaded before the main method or object creation and is useful for complex initialization task then they ask about if we have a static block in different class and method is calling it from another class then what will execute so when the main method exists the other class like creating an object or calling a static method the static block in that class will run first before any code from that class executes okay then he asks about callable and runnable so both callable and runnable are used for running tasks in threads runnable returns nothing while callable can return a result and throw checked exceptions callable is used with the executor service and future then he has primary annotation and when should it be used so primary annotation is used in spring when multiple beans of the same type exist it tells spring to use that beans by default for dependency injection when no specific bean name is mentioned then they ask how did you configure multiple databases in your project so the answers may vary for this question i generally created separate configuration classes for each database define different data source entity manager and transaction manager beans and use the primary rotation qualifier rotation to manage connections and identify which bean blocks to which database okay then interviewer asked how you build a module from scratch so i gathered requirements created the database schema wrote entities repository services and controller added validations and security tested with postman and integrated it with other modules using rest apis and proper configurations then he asks about what security parameters do you check in your applications so generally we should check authentication authorization secure apis using https input validation password encryption role based access control avoid sql injection enable csrf protection and monitor slog for suspicious activities i also keep dependencies up to date then he asked about why do you reuse a spring architecture template so let me tell you my answer i reuse a spring architecture template to save time follow best practices and maintain consistency across projects it provides a clean structure with layers like controller service and repository making development testing and maintenance easier for me okay then they asked to explain about the project architecture so answer of this question may vary you have to answer as per your project then interviewer asked how would you create a custom repository in spring data jpa so to create a custom repository first define an interface with custom methods create its implementation class and extend both in your main repository then spring will use your custom logic along with the built in jpa features then they ask about current tech stack and why did you use spring jdbc instead of hibernate so you can answer like my tech stack includes java spring boot spring jdbc etc etc we use spring jdbc for more control over sql queries better performance and simple use cases where full orm like hibernate was not needed then they ask about the size of an array list if it's dynamic what its initial capacity or limit so an array list is a dynamic and grows as needed by default its initial capacity is 10 and it's automatically increases when elements are added beyond its current size usually by 50% of the old capacity then he ask about what dsa collection types do you use in your project so the answer of this question also may vary we can say like we use array list hash map set queue in our project based on the use cases for store wise record map mapping key values pair removing duplicates and managing task queues for processing data efficiently okay we can answer like this then he asked to explain the internal working of hash map prior to java 8 and after java 8 so this is important question so before java 8 hash map used arrays and links link list for storing entries after java 8 when many collision occurs a link list is replaced with a balanced re for performance okay then they ask how will you configure multiple databases from scratch in a spring boot application so create separate configuration classes for each database define separate data source entity manager factory and transaction manager beans we should use primary annotation for the default database and qualifier annotation for the second one to avoid confusion during injection okay then interview asks how does singleton work in a multi threaded environment if you use a synchronized keyword where should it be added on the class method or variable so this is a good question so singleton in a multi threaded environments needs thread safety use synchronized on the method that returns the instance to prevent multiple threads from creating separate objects double checks locking with volatile is a common approach okay 
then they ask how a payment gateway system works so yes a payment gateway securely process online payments it collects payment info sends into the bank for approval and returns a success failure response it ensures encryptions fraud checks and smooth transactions flow between users and banks then they ask about serialization and what does it actually do so serialization basically converts a java object into a byte stream so it can be saved to a file or sent over a network it helps in storing or transferring object data in a platform independent way then they ask the difference between controller and rest controller in spring so this is an easy question so controller is used for web pages while rest controller is a combination of controller and response body used to return data like JSON directly in the REST APIs. Then they ask how will you return XML instead of JSON from a Spring Boot REST API. So in order to return XML add JSON data format XML or JXP dependency and rotate our model with XML root element and set accept application XML in the request header. Spring will auto convert the response to the XML format. Then they ask about an interceptor and how it is used in Spring Boot. So an interceptor is used to intercept incoming HTTP requests before they reach the controller. In Spring Boot you implement handler interceptor receptor override methods like pre-handle and register it using web mvc configurer to apply common logic like logging or auth then he asks how do you implement logging across the entire application without writing a logic statement in each method in the controller and dao layers so use spring aop create and expect class with around annotation advice to log method calls this way logging is applied automatically across layers without writing logging code in each method then interviewer asks coding questions like write a program to remove duplicates from an array list without using built-in methods or any other collections then write and optimize a program to check if two strings are anagrams so guys this is all about paytm interview experience and please don't forget to check interview preparation kit below in the description thank you